thank you. Um, so in 1927, uh, Henry Ford, the man who, who um, perfected the assembly line and, and, and put the world on, on wheels, obtained a land concession in, in the middle of the Amazon, uh, about two and a half million acres, uh, some of the size of a small uh, U.S. state. It's, it's often uh, described and compared to either Delaware or Connecticut, but also sometimes Tennessee or North Carolina. Uh, the stated purpose was, was to grow rubber. It was the late 1920s, and Henry Ford was at the top of his industry and top of world ca uh, capitalism. He was uh, the richest man in the world, perhaps the richest man in history. He uh, was celebrated for having uh, democratized and humanized uh, industrial capitalism, paying workers uh, enough to buy the products they made. Uh, it was around this time, 1927, that his River Rouge uh, factory the, uh, came online. It was uh, just outside of Detroit and Dearborn. It was the largest industrial plant in the world, 93 buildi buildings, millions of uh, square miles of factory uh, floor space. It had its own uh, foundry, steel, uh, forge, uh, uh, piers, and uh, one historian described it as less a factory than a vortex in which Ford trucks and trains and ships uh, carried minerals and, and wood and, and, uh, and iron ore in, in, into the factory and organized them in a highly systemic way to produce one product, and that, and that being a Ford, a Ford car. Ford had control of, of pretty much every raw material. It was a very extreme case of what economists like to call vertical integration, controlling every aspect of the, of the, of, of the production process needed to make uh, uh, the product, the, the Model T, and then eventually the Model A. He, uh, he owned timberlands in northern Michigan, and he owned mines in Kentucky and West Virginia. He controlled everything uh, 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 except, except rubber, except a source of rubber, and hence his move into the Amazon. But um, uh, like most things with Ford, it, it, it quickly became uh, much more than just an attempt to get control over another raw material. In some ways, it became uh, a Ponzi scheme of high ideals. Uh, Ford felt compelled, as the Washington Times said, to cultivate not just rubber, but rubber tappers. And we saw a little bit of that with the Disney film. Um, he had managers build uh, Cape Cod style uh, shingled houses for, for, for workers. And uh, he urged them to tend flower and vegetable gardens and to eat whole wheat bread, scientifically balanced meals, uh, unpolished rice, canned Michigan peaches, oatmeal. Um, it was the 1920s, and in the United States, prohibition was the law of the land, and uh, he had his managers uh, try to enforce it in Brazil as well, although it wasn't uh, uh, the law, it wasn't legislation there. On weekends, the company organized uh, not just uh, soccer, but also square dancing. This Ford had become a, a bit of a, an obsessional uh, uh, advocate of old-time dance, of conservative uh, of, uh, of a, a square dance and round dance and polkas and waltzes. He had them also listen to recitations of uh, Henry uh, uh, Longfellow poetry and William Wordsworth and, and uh, uh, other poets. The hospital Ford built, and we saw, you saw a little bit of, a, a bit of that in the, in the documentary, offered free health care, not just to workers but to visitors. It was actually designed by Albert Kahn, a famous architect who designed a number of Ford's industrial buildings back in Dearborn. And, and, and Detroit. Um, Ford Land had a central square. It had sidewalks, indoor plumbing, manicured lawns, a movie theater, uh, shoe stores, ice cream and perfume shops, swimming pools, uh, tennis courts, a golf course, and of course, Model Ts and, and, and Model As rolling down its, its paved street, streets. In many ways, it's, uh, it's good to think what's great about the story about Fordlandia, it's, it's, it's almost, it is an epic clash of opposites, uh, two irrepressible phenomena. On the one hand, there's Henry Ford, uh, the man who, re who, reform who revolutionized industrial capitalism by reducing human motion to its simplest possible component uh, to produce a series of identical parts, the first indistinguishable from the million. Uh, Ford once calculated that it, 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 it took 7,882 distinct motions to make a Model T. It's a kind of a great quote. And you know, he just doesn't stop there at calculating 7,882. He goes on, uh, 949 of them by strong, able-bodied men, uh, 670 by legless men, uh, 2,600. <laughs> 
<laughs> and 37 by one-legged men, two by armless men, and 715 by one-armed men, and uh, 10 by blind men. That, that doesn't quite add up to 7,882, so I'm not sure what the, what the difference is, uh, what the quality of the workforce was in, in the difference between those two numbers. Uh, and then on the other hand, there's the Amazon. It's the, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the opposite of what it's the most complex and diverse uh, ecosystem in the world, a place where 7,882 organisms could exist on any five acres. And the encounter between these two forces was almost uh, Chaplin-esque in its absurdity. It produced a parade of mishaps uh, 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 straight out of a Hollywood movie. Uh, I've been using the, the, comp the, the hybrid of, I think, modern times and Fitzgeraldo, but it would also be good to throw in a, a touch of Citizen Kane into that. Uh, Brazilian workers rebelled against towards, uh, Puritanism, and nature rebelled despite the, 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 the nice piece of propaganda that we saw, which I'll talk about in a second, against uh, industrial regimentation. Uh, it was run by incompetent managers who knew little about rubber planting, much less social engineering. Uh, Fordlandia in the early days was plagued by uh, vice and knife fights and riots and uh, and, and, uh, and, and rebellions. Uh, the men Ford sent down to raise his Michigan town knew nothing of planting rubber, rubber much less of uh, creating a, a sociological experiment deep in the middle of a, a tropical rainforest. Uh, they turned the jungle into a mud hole and they burnt large swaths of forest without the slightest idea of what they were doing. Uh, the place seemed less like our town and more like Deadwood, brothels and and casinos and bars began to sprawl around the periphery of the settlement. When Ford managers tried to shut them down, the local merchants just uh, moved the, the brothels off to an island uh, on the river that was outside of Ford's jurisdiction. Uh, some old time who I spoke to said that they called it uh, the island of innocence because nobody was innocent. Um, <laughs> it's a nice image. Uh, Ford managers did eventually manage to gain some sort of sovereignty, some sort of control over the settlement, uh, social control, and the contours of Ford's uh, uh, Midwestern ideal began to come into view uh, as captured in that documentary, in that Disney documentary. But, but then nature rebelled. Um, rubber is native to the Amazon, uh, which also means that the predators that feed off rubber leaves, the bugs and the blight and the caterpillar and the fungi are also native to the Amazon. They evolved in tandem. So you can grow plantation rubber in, in, in a state rubber in Southeast Asia and South Asia and Africa where the predators aren't native. You can have trees close together. But in the Amazon, it's best to grow them, especially at the time before hybrids were, were developed, to grow them dispersed two or three or four through uh, uh, dispersed throughout an acre protected by the jungle groves which slowed the reproduction of the predators that fed off of rubber but but Ford was Ford and uh, he, he um, you know back in Dearborn he famously in River Rouge he famously placed machines close together closer together than did uh, Chrysler or General Motors in order to save motion so in the Amazon he obviously uh, wanted to have industrial mass production of, of rubber and, and uh, and what he, what he effectively did was create a giant incubator, and not once, but over and over and over again. And when the first Fordlandia failed, uh, they, they, they pulled up uh, stakes and they moved down river and they, and they tried again with the same, with the same su success or lack of success. Um, managers tried to halt the spread of bugs and they actually uh, came up with a fairly impressive pest control regime and they, some, they, they uh, Necessity actually forced them to develop some fairly innovative uh, poisons, pesticides from natural from natural plants, but uh, it was all it was all too much too much for them. Uh, uh, there's one great um, one great scene in the book where uh, during uh, one particularly bad caterpillar epidemic, uh, the managers sent every man, woman, and child out in, to fan through the plantation and pick the pick the caterpillars off the, the trees. 